want people when they're really tired, really drained and see how they react to a further challenge or to helping someone else out you know, as opposed to looking after themselves. And that's really when, and we haven't been at that. Some people I think might have reached that le level in terms of their, their physical challenge, but people haven't been psychologically tested yet. It's the weight all over the place, I haven't got it right. You know? It's a bit too high on you, is it? Yeah, and my buckle keeps open. Oh really? It keeps clipping here. Every time I stride forward, I clips. It's killing, it's absolutely killing. Right. Okay, come on right. right now. Yeah. Right. I'm getting on fine. I'm feeling much more confident than yesterday. The last little, her little bit we did now, a little bit harder. I feel it a bit more slippy, but Kate is here and she just is great. She's a little angel. <laughs> I was, like Were I know. You underprepared, uh, you think? Yeah, I was underprepared with yeah. the gear, the, the bag. Just. As the yeah, contenders yeah, pitch their tent near Madman's seat, Tom's hat has stopped working. You know, big time, you know. Yeah. Going up today, we were at I think it was um, uh, Shea, the the mountain Shea, or coming up onto the Blue Mountain off it. And um, like the conditions were so rough at that time, I was just thinking very seriously about my wife and my two boys. And um, then I was saying, like, you know, that's one thing kept me going. And the other thing was, if I pulled myself out or if I sat down, that I was going to take out a couple of leaders with me, that they would have had to stay with me to bring me down. And then I would endanger other people on the team. So I think it would be foolhardy to push on. Good boy, everyone. Uh, best of luck, Tom. Hey, you guys. Good luck, Tom. Right, see, Tom. Lads, I'll only have about four points of Guinness for you. <laughs> the fragile balance between death and survival is often decided not by physical endurance, but by mental strength. When all seemed lost, Shackleton and his men refused to give up hope. When I saw the peaks, which were so beautiful, I couldn't believe that we were all going to walk up, all of them, the amount that we did. But there's no doubt about it, it is extremely tough. It's the toughest thing by far that I've ever done, by far. At this moment, I certainly could not do St. Georgia. Uh, I've no doubt about that. I can't see how it's possible for me to do it when I judge myself against um, all those strong, fit men that are going ahead. I just can't see how. And that's the way I feel at the moment. I've had tuna now in Alpen for breakfast with some faquitas. Did you have those? Yeah, it's very nice. Get better. Where else would you want to be on the day? <laughs> Apart from watching the Ireland oh, English match at half five. Oh, big club with a fire.
Shackleton's hometown of Athai is also home to student Cliff Reed, who has persuaded the expedition leader to let him join those vying for a place on the team. The numbers are grand, no problem that way. And I'm looking at the poster here about your endeavours and I'm thinking, have to talk to this guy in the studio. Cliff goes down, fundraiser in aid of the Cliff Reed's expedition to Antarctica. A Thai man trying to do not the impossible but follow in the footsteps of the likes of Ernest Shackleton. Can you tell me all about this? Yeah, that's basically it. There's um, an expedition from all over Ireland heading down to follow the footsteps of Ernest Shackleton across South Georgia Island. Uh, it would be a terrible shame if we didn't have someone representing uh, his home, his homeland. So um, I rang around a couple of uh, people I knew who were into hill walking and mountaineering and whatnot and said, look, if you, if you decide to do this, I'll raise the money for you. We'll pull it out somewhere. We have to have someone here. And most of them weren't interested because their work commitments, family commitments, whatever. And one of them turned around uh, and said to me, look, Cliff, why don't you do it yourself? You're a student. You don't have family commitments and you don't have work commitments. You should be able to pull it off. Can't help that. Not so. All right. Very good. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Marie. Thank you. Cliff immediately lends his own particular gravitas. <laughs> Some guys have longer ropes than others. All right. <laughs> we rang up Pat Falvey, and Pat was um, he's looking for um, ordinary people to do extraordinary things. You know, you know like no equipment. I, I, I've never done angle. I've never been up a hill in my life, let alone a mountain. Um, I, I used to smoke cigarettes. I, I, you know, I was really unfit. So, like I mean, say, like what I was saying about Thai and it's good community. People come together. So one leg gave me a pair of boots, another leg gave me a trousers, and another leg gave me a jacket and a hat, and that was it. You know. Having tested their fitness and mental strength, the group are now experiencing technical aspects of the training, with life-saving skills high on the agenda. Soon, they will be able to practice in snow instead of sand. Next week, our candidates travel to Norway to continue their training under the command of a former member of the Norwegian Special Forces. Jump, 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 jump. Experts, who's out, they decide. Would she struggle in bad weather? Yeah, she would. She would. Yeah, she would. And in Arctic conditions, temperatures reach boiling point. It would be reckless of anybody to encourage the notion in their head that they could possibly cross out Georgia.